Welcome to Excel Metric number 1320. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Metric 1319 to 1320 start file or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, back in Excel Magic Trick 1318, we needed to determine how many unique visitors to a work site there were each day. Now, in 1318, we used a data model pivot table, which is by far the easiest. But that only exists in Excel 2013 or 16 if you have access to the data model through Power Pivot or in 2016, it's automatically there. That's the easiest method by far. So you can watch that video if you want to see that. Or in that video, we did array formulas, which are the most complicated, but the only one that automatically updates. Now, below this video in the comments, Bill Sizzes, our awesome online Excel teammate, posted a link to his video here. It's in Polish. It is awesome because it shows us two alternative methods. Now, in Excel Magic Trick 1319, we saw one of Bill's tricks using two pivot tables, which is an awesome way if you don't have any of the later versions. Now in this video, 1320, we'll see another one of Bill Sizzes' tricks using Power Query or Get and Transform in Excel 2016. Now our goal, just like in all these other videos, here's the dates and we need to count employees without counting the duplicates. So there should be a count of one, two, and three on 829. All right, so Power Query. In 2010 and 13, you have to search for it and download it and install it. In 2016, it's automatically built in in the Data Ribbon tab. And there it is, the Get and Transform group. Now, if we have data in Excel in order to get it into Power Query, we need to convert it to an Excel table so we can use that button. So I'm going to come down here. Control T to convert it to a table. That just means from now on, this is a table, an object that automatically expands or contracts. I'm going to click OK. I'm immediately going to come up to Design, up to Properties, and click up here to name it or use the keyboard Alt-J-T-A. And there it is. I'm going to name this Job Site Table and Enter. Now I can click in a single cell in this Excel table, come up to the Data Ribbon tab, Get and Transform group, and there it is, From Table. This opens up the Power Query Editor. I'm immediately going to come over, highlight the name. That's the name of the table. And I want to give it a new name. This will be the name of the query that I would come back and edit later. It will also be the name of the table that's loaded into the Excel spreadsheet. Distinct count of employee by day, and Enter. Now, we have four columns. We do not need two of them. I definitely want date. I'm going to hold Control and click on Employee, and then right click Remove Other Columns. Maybe I want to change this to a proper date. So with this column highlighted, I come up to Transform. And there's a data type date. If I wanted an actual list of employees for each particular day, I could select both columns. I use Control or Shift there. Right click, Remove Duplicates. And just like that, you can see I have three 29s and three employee names, a unique list for that date. Now, that's not what our goal was here, so I'm going to click over here. And what we really want is a single listing of each date and then a unique count. So I'm going to select the date column, because that is, in essence, my criteria for counting a unique list over here. I want one of each, so I come up to the Home ribbon, Transform Group, and there it is, Group By. This is like sum ifs or count ifs in Excel. In Structured Query Language, Access, and Power Query, it is what we're going to use to, in essence, have a unique list of criteria from the date and then some calculation on this other column. So group by its date. New column name, I could call this something like unique count or distinct count. Distinct count of employee, and here it is. We want count distinct rows. What this group by does is give me a listing of each item in this column with the calculation on the second column. 
Now I click OK, and just like that, there it is. Now I come up to Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Table is fine. I'm going to select Existing Worksheet, click the Collapse button. I want cell F13, so I click F13. Click OK. Now I come down to Load. And there it is, loaded into the spreadsheet. We can see the name of our query over here. And just like we saw with our pivot tables in the last two videos, this does not automatically update like formulas would. So if I come over here and change this to Fran, or because this is an Excel table, I could add new records to the bottom. Now when I come over and right click, I can point to Refresh. And there it is. The unique count of employees for 829 is 4. Power Query, pretty amazing. I love hanging out on our awesome online Excel team. Thanks to Bill Sizzes for providing the Power Query and two pivot table solution. All right, we'll see you next video.